Welcome back to the Long Dark, guys. This is Ronyan, and we left uh, the ravine in the last video. We're traveling to Mystery Lake to try to find the heavy hammer so that we can go to the forge later on and uh, bang out some uh, arrowheads and, you know, makeshift uh, hatchet and knife mainly. So this, the first part of this is going to be pretty dark. I've just entered Mystery Lake. The dam is off to my right, I believe. But we really can't go there at this time because I don't have a reliable light source. And even if I did, I don't want to encounter Fluffy in there, which is a high probability that, that, that she is in there. And I probably would not, feel, would not fare that well against her. I would probably kill her, but my condition would probably go pretty low. So I don't have any weapons to fight back with other than maybe the crowbar. Alright, so crossing the bridge here, we're going to go visit the logging camp pretty soon. Hopefully you guys can see this. I'm, uh, I can see a bit in the game, but I'm hoping that translates over to the video. It seems like a, a fairly well lit night. I'm coming up onto the, like, piles of logs right that mark the spot to where you turn to go into the logging camp right now. But once we get in there hopefully we can sleep and uh, do the rest of this video in the daytime. Night in the long dark can be very dark but this one's not as bad as some. I can even kind of make out that sun right there. Okay, so let's take a couple hundred more yards here and I should be good. I have to be careful because this is a wolf area. Got about 10 hours of darkness left. That's not too bad. Be able to sleep, uh, sleep uh, pretty good while. Don't know that I need to especially, but... I'll at least be able to warm up with my uh, hypothermia's uh, risk is about to set in on me. About to become freezing. Okay, I hear no evidence of a wolf. That's good news. If I keep going straight this way in a minute or so, I'll come into the logging camp. This place is actually, this is where I started out with my first uh, base of operations in my very first playthrough of the Long Dark. I believe I spawned here and kept coming back here for a little while until I figured out how a lot of the game mechanics work. One of the first things I did was go explore the Overlook. Okay, so we're in the trailer now. I think we're going to... Look at our condition. Eat and drink. Eat this tomato soup. It's 65%. I don't want it to uh, degrade any further down to where I'd be really taking a risk to eat it. So, And I have got uh, food poisoning from items above even 70% a few times. So it's by no means guaranteed, but the risk is far smaller. And then let's drink a little bit of water. And it looks like I can sleep for maybe eight hours, seven or eight hours. If I can find the bed in the dark here. Oh, there it was. Ah, okay. Yeah, eight hours, what we're gonna do. We got plenty of calories there. So let's uh, let's get through this night, guys, so we can see you again. Ah, uh, there may be a blizzard going. I don't, I don't hear any wind blowing. That's probably a good sign. We'll pass some time and see if that goes away. Could be just heavy fog, which would also be pretty bad. Now, whatever it is is still going, and it must be fog because I, I hear no, uh, no sounds of a blizzard going out there.
Yeah, this is the kind of thick fog that it's somewhat dangerous to travel in. But I may do it anyway. We'll see. Get these rose hips. And I'm bummed that I still haven't found the heavy hammer. That's gonna be a main goal of this, uh, this area. There should be one here. I would be pretty surprised if there wasn't. I know I found two heavy hammers on the, an interloper run before, so I don't know if there's two in every game or if some games only have spawn, uh, one spawn on the map. But I suspect there's probably two in every run. Y'all can just let me know if I'm wrong about that point. Ah, uh, here's a book, a generic book. Those are always good for starting fires. Uh, nothing under the beds, not really anything else here, so let's go ahead and uh, get out. Okay, so let's go ahead and check out this last trailer. Oh, it looks like my fog has lifted out now. Or is lifting. Probably not much here in this room. Uh, there's, oh, some wool socks. That's not bad. Wool socks are always a pretty good find. I think it's... Well, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure I know. I don't think you can find the... What the... Now I can't remember what the socks are called, but they have, like, red on them. And I think they're a little bit better than wool socks. So, uh, I don't think you can get them in an interloper. I've never seen them in an interloper. Alright, so we've kind of checked that place out. Didn't find any hammer or anything else too interesting other than a book. So, let's pick up some sticks here to make sure I don't freeze. That I can light a fire if I need one. My condition is excellent, 93%. Be nice if I could keep it that high all the time. But the strategy of needing to move a lot in Interloper prevents you from doing that. You have to uh, explore a lot of loot locations, as many as possible, due to the low chance of finding anything. So you have to be traveling pretty much all the time in Interloper. Especially in the earlier game before you have any good tools. So let's go out here and we're gonna, um, I think turn to the left, no, we'll see, um, I'll recognize it when I get out there, but we may be to a right turn, but we're, we're gonna go towards the camp office, go a little farther down, and we're gonna pass the derailed train cars on the way. It's really pretty devoid of wildlife here so far, I haven't seen anything. No rabbits, deers, or wolves. And thankfully no bears. The only thing I see are these uh, ravens up here. So the fog has lifted some, but not completely. I still have reduced visibility pretty significantly. Yeah, there is a deer carcass here, so... I'll have to see what the temperature is and whether I can take this or not. Be nice if I had some coal on me, but I don't think I do. Yeah, we're gonna try it. I think I can raise the temperature enough here. Let's get cracked on campfire going. Yeah, it's not too cold. It's, it's this is gonna work, I think. May have to put a little bit more into it, but it should be fun. Yeah, a couple more sticks. Yeah, we're above 32, so let's go ahead and take the meat off of it. And the hacksaw is surprisingly good at harvesting meat off these things. And when they're frozen, only though. Uh, take a few minutes to cook one each one of these slabs. Adding to the cooking uh, skill there. 
can be pretty important in the later game if you're able to get cooking to at least level 4. Because at some point your risk of intestinal parasites goes way down from, uh, from predator meat like wolf meat. And you can just eat it without worrying about that. And that's really nice. But it takes a long time to get there, and Interloper often doesn't allow you to get that far. It'll uh, the game will kill you first, so unless you're really good, you can survive you know 50 plus days, which is pretty tough. I haven't personally had a 50 day run yet. My uh, maximum has been 48. And I have played interloper mode, oh, probably at least 300 hours on interloper mode alone. So I've considered myself fairly experienced with it, and it is one of the more difficult game modes of any game I've ever played. Definitely the most difficult of any survival game I've played. One thing about Interloper is, even when you're experienced in Stalker, going to this mode is you have to grind it out for a long period of time before you become even able to survive, say, two weeks. It's quite difficult to even get that far. You have to have a, a really strategic way of playing the game. Knowing what your top priority goals are at any given time. And the game has a way of setting you up for nasty, uh, multiple bad uh, occurrences which will lead you farther and further down in condition, and it's especially true in interloper mode. And they really are just coincidences, the game isn't actively trying to kill you or anything like that, it's not alive, so don't worry about that, but <laughs> anyhow. Things have a way of piling on you uh, in a survival situation in reality, and I guess the game is trying to emulate that. Let's see if we can't use these rocks as a little windbreak here. Uh, it's, well, I don't really need to do it that bad. I mean, I can, but it's not terribly cold. I should be able to haul all the way to the camp office like this. Right around this corner should be the train derailment. Maybe one of the most iconic uh, parts of this game is this derailment. A lot of people remember this more than anything else, I think. Maybe second to the dam, though. Because everybody pretty much starts out in Mystery Lake and learns that map first. I know that's what I did. Okay, not much to be found there. We'll take a, may take a look inside this train car. Uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and look. Make sure I'm lined up right on the tree. It doesn't look like I'm gonna see much here. Nope. Alright, let's get moving. Camp office is a couple hundred yards up ahead. Pretty stiff wind blowing out today. Still not a trace of wildlife. Is the wildlife already starting to become scarce? It does become less and less common as you advance an interloper, but I'm not really far enough to start seeing that too much yet. I still have carcasses laying around and stuff like that. Alright, 
the camp offices right around this corner. We're going to hit that and eventually hit the trapper's cabin. We're going to explore the lake some first though, but I'll do that in the next episode. So let's quickly get in here before we start freezing. If possible. No, I already am freezing, looks like. I missed where it said that. Okay, so let's get in here and warm up some. Uh, what stone? That's a good find. Allow me to sharpen my makeshift tools and make them last longer. Quick. And check out the drawer. No, nothing to be found there. Water purification tablets. That's not too common in Interloper, I don't think. You know, I question how useful those things are, but... I think they're a little bit faster than boiling the water, but it doesn't seem like they're they're all that much better to me, I don't know. Oh look, herbal tea. That is an excellent find. Wow, that is great. Let's come upstairs here, check out this dead guy. Field dressing the kill, that's going to help me raise my harvest carcass harvesting skills. And that's pretty crucial when you're out in the weather trying to harvest something. When you can reduce that time, it's a really good thing to do. Oh, look, a magnifying lens. That's that's actually a really good find. It'll spare me on matches every now and then. Nothing under the beds. Yeah, already looks the dead guy. We're gonna go ahead and uh, uh, call, we're gonna call it an episode here, guys. Uh, appreciate all the people that have commented. I appreciate that, and uh, yeah, leave me a comment or a like. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.